Hi there. We're Ramin and Anna. Together with our dogs, Kamu and Kulo, we travel to Great Britain in our camper van Noor in the spring of 2023. This is how it went. We arrived in Travemünde quite late at night and found a parking spot in the middle of the forest. It was a peaceful spot for the night and we managed to spend the morning working there and walking the dogs, after which we started the drive towards Dunkirk, stopping in Bremen to get some packages. Just keep driving late into the night. We finally reached Bruges in Belgium quite late at night and found a spot near a canal. We chose it because it was close to Dunkirk and we had a fairly early start in the morning to catch the ferry. Good morning. Uh, that passport is full. There's another one for that dog that has the yeah, current. There. That one. Yeah. Come on. Bye, thank you. Except for our few trips to Russia with Kamo before COVID started, this was the first time our dog's passports had been checked, let alone their vaccinations and everything else related to traveling with the dogs. Thank you. After getting used to the free travel in the Schengen zone during the last few years, the passport control and in general the check-in experience at Dunkirk was something else. Of course for us humans there were also the normal checks of our passports asking why we're traveling to Britain, how long we're going to spend there and all of that. But then there was the extra checks to make sure that we're not transporting any illegal immigrants into the country, which meant that for the first time crossing the border, we had to actually open up the doors of our camper van and show the insides to the inspectors. Since one of the officials inspecting the van was a dog person, they wanted to spend some time also looking at the dogs as well, which was nice. With all the stops and checks and opening and closing of the doors, both Kamu and Kulo were a bit stressed. So a bit of a break at, after the check-in before the ferry left and a quick stop at the doggy toilet there helped relax them quite a bit. So why the ferry instead of the faster and in some ways more convenient Euro tunnel? Well, we looked into it, but 50 euros is 50 euros, but the ferry was cheaper. So we were willing to spend a bit extra time on the ferry instead of the faster train. And we have to admit, standing on the deck, watching the white clips of Dover grow minute by minute is an experience in itself. I'm no poet, but there is a beauty in the growing anticipation when you see the coastline approaching and start to first see the white cliffs, followed by starting to see individual buildings and the first English castle of the trip. If you're going to England for the first time, we strongly recommend this option, just because of the legendary view of the white cliffs of Dover. For Anna, the first moments of oncoming traffic coming on the passenger side caused some interesting looks on her face. Ah, the wonderful moment of first driving on the wrong side of the road. 
have to admit, I'm happy that for me this wasn't the first time drive in England. Uh, I've previously lived in England and that's when I had a Finnish car already and learned to maneuver with a smaller car and now it was a lot easier with the big camper van. Thankfully, after a few minutes of driving, we made it to the parking lot of the White Cliffs of Dover for a walk with the dogs. We even tried to get down to the beach, but the last part of the ladder was too steep to consider taking the dogs down. They had to wait for their first swim. We made our way to a nice spot in the middle of the countryside, east of Dover, for the night. Drawing the windshield before heading out in the morning was pretty much an everyday occurrence, especially during this trip. The stereotype of the British Isles being rainy and wet, well, we sure can't disagree with it. After our breakfast, we headed further east into Sandwich for a walk through the countryside to the sea. And now finally, the boys did get to romp around on the beach and go for a dip in the cool waters of the English Channel. Even though with the heavy mine rights of the Nordics, we're very used to being allowed to walk pretty much everywhere. Walking through a golf course was definitely a new experience and a good example of the power of public footpaths in England. After our walk, we turned towards the north, drove to a nearby shopping center, and went to get a prepaid SIM card so that we had internet in our van. From there, we headed up towards Margate, an old resort town, for Anna's first proper fish and chips. After our dinner of fish and chips, we continued our drive, heading past London over the Dartford Crossing, and found a spot for the night and the next work day near Ipswich. Once the work day was finished, we started to look for a place to walk the dogs, and found a place called Thetford Forest, went there to walk the dogs, found out that the parking lot was free to slip, spend the night, so we decided to spend a night there. last spoke in Germany. Um, now we're in England, as you could probably imagine from the ruins behind me. We had a long day of driving from Germany all the way to near Bruges in Belgium. Spent the night there, then went to catch the ferry over the channel, and then we've spent pretty much two days taking it a bit more easy, visiting the White Cliffs of Dover, taking the boys for a walk from the home of sandwiches to the seaside and just recuperating from the long drive. Now we're done with the work day, just done with a walk with the boys. I'm gonna go out for a mountain bike ride and 
we'll leave you at that and we'll catch you in the next episode with our crofts experience